This clip is brought to you by SaveWithConrad.com. Let me ask, because it does feel like knowing what we know in hindsight now, especially when we get past to say a WrestleMania 10 and, and he's not on the card, was there, were you guys trying to convince him to be a heel and he was reluctant to do it? I only ask because we know that, you know, I don't know, sometime in the middle of 94, we'll get into it in a minute that happens and it works wonderfully, but it wasn't really working before was Vince trying to push him to be a heel. He resisted. They tried it as a baby face when that didn't work. Then he pitched the heel thing and maybe he resisted. So as a result, we just don't put him on WrestleMania 10 and hope he comes around. We're using him less and less and hope he comes around or tell me when, when his attitude on being a heel changed or was he always open to it? And it was just, wasn't the right time. Well, I think a part of it is, is show me. And a big part of it is keeping him out there and you let the audience continue to boo him and continue to react the way that they were reacting to it. Now you're feeling that and Bob can go out and feel that and realize, let, let him do it longer. Let him continue to do it to where it finally takes Bob over the edge and he snaps. So there was a method to the madness and it wasn't like, Oh, you know, Sometimes there's too much red in the shit versus let it be. Well, let's talk about it. July 1st in Pennsylvania, they're going to open the show with Bob Backlund doing a squash win. He's going to use the chicken wing, but he's not going to let go of the hold. Even after the match, they're ringing the bell four or five times before he finally breaks it. And he's ignoring the fans after the match. Meltzer would write, I'm told this wasn't taped but was strictly a tryout. But after 10 years, it seems like they finally got Backlund to do what they wanted him to do. Did you, did you ask him to just go do a tryout like Dave sort of freestyles here and, and who ultimately wound up selling him on the idea? Do you think? Well, no, it was Pat Patterson and I were at that time were mainly doing the TVs and things of that nature. And Vince was, I think either in the trial or preparing for trial, what have you. But as time went on and, you know, Bob's feeling this hostility, if you will, with the audience and the timing was right. The timing was there. So try it. Let's see how in a traditional Northeast environment where Bob had been for so many years, let's try and see how they react. And they reacted. Yes, they did. And we know it's going to happen in a major way when they do it, uh, in ocean city, Maryland, uh, two days later, they do a Bob Backlund turn that Meltzer says may not air, but Backlund winds up getting a small package, but Brett's going to kick out. Backlund thinks he's won. And then Brett gets a small package for the pin. And after the match, they go to shake hands, but Backlund slaps him and puts him in the chicken wing and wouldn't break the hold. This was really, really well done. I mean, I don't, I, I can't think of a more surprising sort of heel turn than this one, you know, until years later with Hogan and all that. But this was really, really good stuff here that I don't think anybody saw coming. No one saw, I mean, no one saw it coming, but I think a lot of people wanted it to come. And Bobby did that. It was so natural and, and Brett was so great as well in it that we said, oh my God, yeah, right. Felt good. And we did it in a, in a spot where Bob had been revered for years. So that helped work, make it work too. Let's, um, let's also kick around some rumor and innuendo. Was there ever going to be a storyline reason why Backlund became a bad guy? Because one of the rumors going around was, well, Hey, maybe they're going to bring back Papa Shango and say that he put a spell over, over Bob Backlund. And now that's why Bob is different after all these years. Uh, I'm sure that's one of the many correspondence that Belcher has that bites come in. 
account and figure out what's going on. No, that was never discussed. I didn't get a single word you said right there. Can we relick that calf one more time? I said, no, that was never discussed. And that's just one of those situations of uh, a Meltzer correspondent who has to buy tickets to get into the arena who thinks that they know something because they're sitting on the sixth row. Well, here's what's weird. After I thought this Brett thing went pretty well, uh, Bob winds up working in Japan for war. How does that deal come to be? Or is this something that war worked out through your office? It was something that was worked out through the office. Okay. When was it determined? Hey, that was a hit. We're going to go with Bob and Brett at survivor series. Well, as far as Pat and I were concerned, it was pretty much determined that night ocean city. Uh, it was just such a, such an unexpected event that was received exactly how we wanted the audience to receive it. So that was the point like, damn it, we, we could go all the way to this. Really cool stuff happening at the September 27th TV tapings in Poughkeepsie. It's a superstars taping. That's again, all about Bob Backlund. Backlund's going to make fun of Shawn Michaels saying he's against the new generation. Later, he does a demonstration of a chicken wing and he won't break the hold on his old manager, Arnold Scotland, because he's mad at Scotland for throwing in the towel in 83. And then sparky plug, Bob Holly makes the save. And Backlund later uses that same hold on Holly and beats him in three minutes. So Arnie playing a, uh, a television character here again, getting back on TV. How hard was it to get him to stop playing cards to get the chicken wing here? Very, it was very hard to get him to put the car out for a minute, uh, get out of whatever cribbage game, but Arnie, you know, look, Arnie, his days in the ring over and never wanted to do any of that stuff. But Arnie and, and back have a really good relationship. Happy to do it for Bobby. Well, let's keep it going. Let's talk about what's next here on the show. Uh, Meltzer would write Bob Backlund is getting the mega mega push on all the TV building up to the pay-per-view, which is how it has to be in order to sell the show. I don't know that Backlund is going to win the title but it appears they're going to take it from Brett within the next few months. I don't know if it's to sell pay-per-views or not, but I'm thoroughly entertained by Backlund's insane straight arrow postman gone berserk gimmick by societal pressures. Even if half the time he uses big words when they don't even actually make sense. The segment on the Shawn Michaels thing where Michaels told Backlund he was nuts and he was just his kind of guy and he and diesel want to party with him. And Backlund told Michaels, he wouldn't associate with people like that was hilarious. This is a, another side of his persona that we never saw. Is this something Backlund comes up with on his own? Or is this you and Pat pulling the strings and saying, what if? No, it, it was a combination of, of everything. And Bob, you know, really embraced the character and looked at different ways to make it fresh and different than a traditional heel. So, you know, Bobby had, was having fun with this damn thing. And so were we. Let's, uh, let's also mention that we have tons of feedback from, from people on social media who say they met Bob in this era in real life, you know, not in the confines of a WWF show. And whenever they would identify themselves as a wrestling fan or approach him, he would stay in character and do this same full bit. And that's, I don't know, man, something about that super charming to me as a wrestling fan. And I really appreciate that. Yeah, you got, you got Bobby 24 seven. Bobby was living the gimmick. Eventually he puts uh, both Lex Luger and Randy Savage in the chicken wing all to build up his title match with Bret Hart. Everybody loves Bob though. No objections. I'm sure. Right. Yeah, I mean, I think that there were some people in the, in the company that felt that, good Lord, you know, we're going with this old guy that's uh, out of touch and should be going with the young guys and the youth, and yet Bob was more interesting than a lot of the younger guys and youth that we had. 
but by God, Bob stepped up and Bob wasn't an asshole. So all the more, I think that people didn't mind helping him and doing the right thing. Let's, uh, let's talk about Pat Patterson here for a minute. Meltzer would write the angle where Jim Ross got put in the chicken wing aired on superstars over the weekend. And he was wearing a sling on action zone the next day. Bob Backlund also put a sound man in the chicken wing on raw. And this repush of Backlund was one of Pat Patterson's last ideas. Patterson has officially retired and cleaned out his desk as of December 1st and is scheduled to move to Florida full time. Of course, we know Pat Patterson never really retires. Uh, he's going to be back before you know it, but this was one of his big initiatives pushing Bob Backlund and, uh, <laughs> How easy was it to convince Jim Ross to take the chicken wing? Of course, over the years, you're going to break cement blocks over his head and shatter glass jars and make him kiss people's ass and pull his head out of his own ass and have Austin beat him up. But I think this is one of the first times we saw Jim Ross in some physicality. Talk to me about Jim Ross being involved physically and how Pat Patterson may or may not have been involved in all that. Well, good old JR was the play by play. He was your host of the show that everyone knew and loved. So, if you want to get heat, why not go after him and beat him up, a defenseless play by play guy? And then, when someone comes to the rescue of JR, the problem was trying to find anyone that would come to the rescue. I like the idea of putting a sound man in the chicken wing on raw too. I mean, just having him go crazy and, and, and attack everybody was, was good stuff. He is back in the Royal rumble again in 1996. This time he's eliminated by Yokozuna. He does this, uh, backland for president gimmick, but it's sort of going unnoticed for a while. Do you think with Pat maybe easing out and there's nobody championing for it and it just doesn't get the TV time it did before? Did Vince get bored with it? Why do you think it started to take a bit of a backseat? It just kind of petered out, you know, and I think that we actually had Bob register to run for president, and it just petered out. It, it just, uh, you know, you had a lot of steam at the beginning, and then after a while, the real, pe- the real presidential race was just uh, garnering the headlines and not what we were doing. Let's, uh, let's keep it moving. Talk about Madison square garden, May 19th, 1996. Savio Vega is going to defeat Bob Backlund in his last singles match at Madison square garden. In fact, this is Backlund's last match for the WWF during this run. Had it just run its course and it's time to, uh, move on. It had, and I think Bobby had grown tired of traveling and not doing anything without being involved in a major storyline. So it's time for Bob to take a little rest. Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you get a notice anytime we upload some new content. And go save yourself some money right now. If you're in a 30-year loan or you have credit card debt, it's not a matter of if I can save you money. It's a matter of how much. Find out right now for free at SaveWithConrad.com.